Hi, and welcome back to Manipause.com, our Manipod podcast with our special guest and friend and fourth time guest with us, Mark Fournier. Mark is a three-time uh, Emmy Award winning filmmaker. He's an author, a poet, a patent inventor. You are everything, but you're a life coach and a friend. And, you, and, and you're doing uh, an amazing job just bringing limitless to uh, the mindset of everybody, especially us 50 plus year olds. And so welcome, Mark. And we're going to talk about the giving game today. So Thank tell you. us, what's the giving game? All right. The, the, the giving game is, uh, and I realize that we've been skirting the issue around this concept of mindset. Uh, and at some point, we probably want to really help people understand what is a mindset but for the time being. Uh, we'll let it be that it's sort of like the garden in which, uh, I, the, in which all of your, your, your plants are growing. It's, you know, it's the soil. It's, you can have a clay uh, garden with, with clay or with sand or with this rich black loam, or it can be rock. And the things that grow in it will be determined by this garden, by, by the, uh, the dirt you put in that. And so it's the framework for your life and the way you live it. And so a, um, uh, the idea of, of having a, a mindset of contribution uh, would set up uh, uh, playing the giving game. So yeah, it's a game quite literally, but it's mostly like life is a game. I mean, again, we have all of our needs are met. We are, are food, shelter, water, and oxygen. Why are we here? Well, we're here because we're going to make the most of everything we can. And, and we're going to play the game of life. That could be building your career, building your family. That could be climbing Mount Everest, could be anything. And so one of the games that you can play is this compassionate game uh, that I call the giving game. So uh, I and started I to- wrote a book about that, didn't you? Um, yes. And you know, I just <laughs> happen so to have- funny. What uh, the- what, what a coincidence. I just happened call? to have well, a copy. Look at that. And I think that's available on Amazon.com, yes? Yeah, sure. The yep, Giving Game by Mark Fournier. Yes, it's Very a nice. story by Mark Fournier. So I put it in a story format. You can actually get these Giving Game cards. They're like play it, for, pay it forward cards. Oh, nice. You do something for someone and you leave this card uh, anonymously and ideally they then do something for someone and then they leave the card anonymously and, and so on and so forth. We so even have a website. You the same card or? So, you yeah. So, so you can take and We have a website. Uh, forward that, kind of thing. That, yeah. Well, and, and this website where we're launching this, where you can actually give it a number. I got the idea from, you know, those dollar bills where they put a number on it and you find one. And so where you can actually go in and log um, your, the card that you got, what you received and then you then do something for someone else and then they log it and log it and you can go back and track it's again it's like pay it forward you can see how many people's lives were changed because you changed this one person's life who then was felt compelled to change someone else and someone and track it all around the world how, how where is my card today you know, where's waldo and 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 wow. let me see how many lives were changed and you can so, get that on Amazon? Um, so yeah, you can get these get on Amazon. Product. And then there's the website itself, which is thegivinggame.net. Oh, and okay. you can All actually right. play the giving game on that scale. Um, so it's, uh, but, but at its basic form, um, it, it simply started with, uh, uh, I used to say that my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving because those two words, give you the secret to having the greatest life of your life. Thanks, living in a state of appreciation and gratitude and giving a state of compassion and contribution. If that defined your life, you'd have a pretty amazing life. And so um, mm. the, the giving part, uh, I started looking at the science of giving and did all sorts of research. And yes, sure enough, discovered that people who live in a state of contribution, uh, a giving state like you described when you went to, when you go to Honduras, uh, Uganda. 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 Yeah, yeah, you know, tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure that they think that it's different. Yes, <laughs> they're both on Earth. That's the most. Yeah, popular. that's true. Yeah. Clearly, you guys are better listeners <laughs> than I am. <laughs> uh -oh. So, 
Uh, and so, yeah, so you're playing the giving game when you go, Mike, and the rewards are uh, immeasurable. Uh, and, and so as I started to see the benefits, and, and I mean, these benefits go beyond uh, the obvious. Uh, they're cancer patients playing the giving game. They're, they're people who normally would be the victim, the recipient, uh, and they find that when even they turn around and say, no, I'm going to contribute to others, people in a cancer ward, there's, there's the ones who are just lying there being miserable, and there's the ones getting up and helping the others. And you will find that the ones who are up trying to make a difference in the lives of the others, not only are much happier, they do get healthier. They are more likely, of course, again, as the doc on the block here, uh, you know yeah. about the, the chemistry and the, how it builds their immune system when we're in that the states of contribution. And, and when we're giving, it makes us more appreciative because, see, we tend to compare up in life. We compare to people who have more than us. And it causes us to feel worse about our life. But when you compare down, it makes you feel better about your life. So it goes back to, again, thanks and giving. When I contribute to someone with less, it makes me appreciate my life more. And I get all the, uh, the, the warm brain chemistry from contributing. So, so on a general scale, the giving game is a mindset. It's a way of being. It's a way of looking at life and looking at the world as, as an infinite number of opportunities to uh, make, uh, make a difference in the world, make a difference in the lives of others. And, and, uh, and it can go from a, a, a microcosmic scale to, uh, it, there's no limit to how big or how small this can be. And Are you then, saying it's limitless? It's son of a gun, there's that darn <laughs> word again. It is limitless in its potential. And, and we probably wanna spend a couple of minutes talking about how this, how you would apply this in your life on a grand scale, and right. how you would apply it on an intimate scale. So, well, and we've seen, we've seen, and we have friends. There's a couple of categories that they've worked in. One is a mentorship program, which is really good for people who are retiring, who have skills. Doesn't matter what it is that they can pass on, whether it's in business or any kind of skill they have, they can pass on to younger people. Give back. Oh, and yeah. then the, other, the other thing is we actually have, uh, we have a friend who has has uh, as part of his career has a, a, a tourism thing that whenever you go someplace and it's not for a tax write off, uh, right. you look uh, where you're going and you see where you could potentially help. So even like when he goes to Las Vegas, he contacts uh, one of the local um, uh, uh, yeah, food banks. It says, hey, can I volunteer for a few hours? And they're like, of course. So when he goes to Vegas, in addition to just having fun, he goes there for four hours or something and helps at the food bank. So all those little kind of things can add up. They may he, not he be grandiose. It, he calls it volunteerism. Yeah. Volunteerism. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, right? that's our he friend Jeff Blumenfeld. That. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's so clever. clever. Volunteerism. Yeah. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And does he win in Vegas? So he, if he does the <laughs> giving back, then he goes to the casino or is it just the opposite? Yeah. I don't know if it, I don't know if it adjusts the, uh, the gambling karma at all, but uh, oh, okay. it certainly makes him feel better. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. See that way you win no matter what. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, Hey, I like to, I, I, I will uh, uh, game a system as, if I can. And that's yeah. one way to game your life is, yeah by playing the giving game, you win no matter what. You can't lose at the giving game. Yeah. Because if, especially if you're playing with someone else, and, and we'll get to that in just a moment. I want to make sure we cover that before we right. say our goodbyes. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get there. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's get there. <laughs> so, well, so, there Mark. Go ahead, Mike. No, no, take us there. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to hear this. So, yeah. So, uh, in fact, my, my book is, uh, it breaks it down into the two different primary forms of giving. And uh, of the giving game. And one is it's, it's, it's an epic, quite literally, like Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey. Uh, as a writer, I'm always challenging myself. And so I found what was the format of, a, of an, uh, an epic. And it's written in, um, in uh, rhyme and um, uh, meter. And, and it usually involves some great uh, battle and some great tale and some great lesson. And so sure, there's, there's these villages that are 
at war with one another and it looks like nothing good will ever come of it. And then at the smaller scale, in one of the villages, there's a couple who are, their marriage is falling apart from, uh, they lost a child and, and it looks like there's no way that they can salvage this marriage, no way that they can set that the two countries can salvage their relationships. And so the giving game turns out to be the solution to all of it. And so while the guy is using the giving game uh, to help with, the, uh, with this war at hand, he begins using it in his own life and discovers its, uh, its incredible power. So um, some of my books are just classic, um, you know, personal development books like, you know, on uh, uh, habits, uh, ways to just improve your life. And some I disguise as, as stories. It makes them more fun and more interesting. So yes, your, your moonshot, which we talked about in the last thing, it could be about making a difference, about changing the world, about something my moonshot is. It's absolutely about uh, addressing all of the major maladies and issues of the world. And, and then I break down into how we go about it in the rollout play. Um, uh, but most people will be, that'll be their moonshot that they may or may not ever reach. Of course, the saying, uh, you know, aim for the moon at the very least, you'll wind up among the stars. So somewhere between where you are now and moonshot might be here. And hey, that could be a hell of a legacy. We only help 3 million people instead of 30 million. I can live with that, right? Right, right. But, but on a personal scale, um, the, I, I have kind of a literal version of the giving game and it, and it works like this. Uh, in most relationships, uh, human beings, because this is how we're programmed is we're busy trying to get our needs met. And from time to time, we'll, if somebody asks for some help, we'll, we'll try to help them out. And this could also be with our spouse uh, and, uh, and with our kids. Um, but the giving game does it differently. Instead of saying, okay, I'm going to spend 80% of my time getting my needs met and 10 or 20% meeting the needs of others. It says, I'm going to spend 80% of my time helping others get their needs met and only 20% of my own. And you, and you might immediately think, well, if you're only spending 20% on getting your needs met, what, how, how are all those other needs going to be met now that you've reduced the amount of time and resources, well, you play it with the other people. They're playing the same game. So if they're spending 80% of their time meeting the needs of others, say your needs, and you're spending 80% meeting theirs, your needs end up getting met. It's just they're getting met by someone else. And it's not a codependent thing because there's no expectation. You remove the expectation and it's just gratitude, which puts you back into thanks and giving. And right. I've seen relationships blow up where it's kind of like the idea is, um, oh, my wife did this great thing for me. Damn, uh, she's winning. How can I outgive her? What can I do that will blow her away? She planned this vacation in Vegas. Well, dang it, I'm, I'm going to plan one in Uganda. <laughs> uh, I'm going to plan something <laughs> even more spectacular. Um, it, it, what was that? Yeah, Uganda. Yeah, I mean, you got it. Yeah, I'm fixing all of my... Uh, you got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get on a roll and then, you know, the actual words don't really matter as long as you get the idea. Right. <laughs> Unless you live in that country and you're like, idiot, don't run for office because you'll be one of those presidents that can't remember the name of a country. <laughs> so well, yeah, I, in this case... I, I, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's been something that has been... Uh, I think around for for millennia, the whole idea uh, of giving, I mean, uh, Maimonides wrote the 10 levels of giving uh, back in the like 13th century or something. And the, and the most honorable way of giving, as far as he was concerned, is anonymously. It's not only yeah. anonymous to uh, to the person that you've given to, but you don't know who you've given to either. Oh, so, uh, a double blind study. A double blind. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about it, it's like, yeah, you know, the 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 response you should get to to giving is the giving, not hey, I gave to that person, so I helped them, or for them to be able to say, oh, thank you for helping me, right? I mean, that then becomes um, can become a, a slippery slope. But if you're just giving. Uh, without recognition of of you know the person that you're that's getting the gift, 
and also you not even knowing, so there's no chance that you would ever hold it over them. Uh, he thought was the the most uh, godly way of giving, but this was you know hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's been known for a long time that giving can make your own life better. Yeah. Well, and I and I love that you've mentioned that version because because what I did was combine the two. So I so on the big picture and the you know the anonymous giving you get mm-hmm. you get the benefits of that. Uh, and and they can be again priceless on the more intimate level because it's it's more difficult to give anonymously to your wife when she walks in and sees that the bed was made. Right. What the hell? Right. What happened? Somebody's been in our house, honey. You, you need to lock the front Are door. Are you dying? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so so I thought, why not do take the best of both versions? And one of them is the anonymous, nothing. You know, just it's just out there. And right. then the version where. Um, I'm going to give to you with no expectation of anything. And if you're playing the same game, what happens is you both wind up with more. You, they give you more than you would have given yourself. They Plus, of course, you're living in total gratitude and contribution. And if, if you're a little competitive, it can really get exciting because at <laughs> some point you've done something for the other person and they finally say, I can't top this. You win. And when that happens, you get to go, oh, yay, I won. Well, they won because they're the ones who got the thing that you can't right. top. Right. So you both win. Both win. And, then, right. and then you start small and the game starts over with yeah. little things back and forth. And then it escalates and escalates until you. And so it's this wonderful cycle of continually trying to figure out how can I blow this person away? How can I make their life amazing? What awesome. can I do that they wouldn't have even thought of? That's great. That's great. You know, you gave me a a little gift that you did not know you were giving me. Like I I brought this up at one of the other podcasts um, with with the uh, turning a negative into a positive. And you told me that story in business, how to do it. Right. And I'm thinking, you know, to leave off in giving our audience a little gift. How do you turn a negative into a positive? Because a lot of people oh are negative God. thinking. They always think the worst of everything. Give a great example of turning a negative into a positive. Oh, my gosh. I love it. First, step one, because we've already had a couple of other uh, uh, shows on the, the power of the mind. You stop calling it a negative. That's just a label. Step one, who says it's a negative? Calling it a negative assumes that it's a bad thing. And the reason why we do that is because it's not what we wanted. Anytime we want or expect something to be a certain way and it doesn't turn out that way, we label it as bad, as that's negative. And so if you remove the label, now it's just what happened. Now, instead of taking it from a negative to a positive, it's looking at what happened and asking the question again, what's great about this? How can I benefit from this? And so uh, if you look at every invention ever created, that was a result of somebody saying, oh no, this is bad, this is bad. And somebody else walking in, opportunity mindset going, what's asking what's great about this. And that person sees it and goes, oh my gosh, if I can figure out a solution to that, I'll make a fortune and I'll help a lot of people. And you can literally let that be your way of being where you simply refuse to see anything as a negative, it's just what happened and it's different from what you expected. So you, so that's the main thing is the step well, you one, said, you let said, go of the label. You, you said when you're, when you're sitting in a boardroom and you've got all of your employees sitting around and the client just said, hey, you blew up the hospital. How do you get out of that room, turning that into a positive? And I, that, you, I, that's a bad example, but you know, something happened and you're, yeah. Say you're building something and you're building and right. something happens. Somebody right. gets hurt or some something happens to your relationship with a client. How do you leave that room? Beautiful. Positive. Beautiful. Okay. Um, you asked for a real life example. We'll go back to good old Elon Musk. All right. Because uh, you said blew up. Hello, blew up, Musk, rocket. <laughs> right. So, so first thing that one of the most Uh, important things you can do is I do not believe in negative feedback. I don't think there is such a thing. 
we don't want it. It's like, oh, I want positive feedback, not negative feedback. And get rid of the word negative. It's all positive feedback because it's all constructive. If you look at all feedback as constructive, no matter what the feedback is, it's just information. And that's what Elon Musk does. It's just information. Give me more, more, more. The idea of there is no, my definition of failure is the absence of growth. Well, if you learn from it, you didn't fail. And so failure way to success. We all do. That's how you get there. By doing something and having something blow up and ask the question, now what do we do? How do we keep from, from, from blowing this stuff up? Which is what he did. So his rockets would blow up. He would go and build another and another, expected to have three rockets, hoping to get to the, you know, to, to figure it out before the third one. But he planned on fail, failing. All along the way, he was saying, things are going to blow up. Get ready for it. After the third one blew up, um, they were like, oops, uh oh, <laughs> we don't have enough money for the fourth rocket. So now at this point, you get to decide, what am I going to do next? Because he has the opportunity mindset, because he has the, uh, the limitless mindset, um, his immediate thought was, everybody else is going through the same learning curve. This is great because it's a barrier to entry. This is going to shut down Bezos. It's going to shut down um, uh, uh, anybody who's trying to come this way. They're going to be discouraged. And we're going to find a way to get that fourth rocket up. And we're going to find a way. And of course, they learned from every time it blew up. And they asked the question, how can we keep this from happening again? How can we use this to make our rockets even better? Whether it's a rocket ship or a hospital, everything that happens sets you up for the question, what's great about this and how can I use this to make things even better? Mm -hmm. and, and with that mindset, again, nothing that comes along, there's nothing that can't be turned into something else. The cure for every disease started with a plague. Uh, you know, you, you name all, all the good things on this planet, it probably started with something that people thought of as being negative or bad. Does that feel better? Ah, I feel much better. Thank you. So, so again, you know, the whole idea of giving is, is a good way to think about, like I said, the, the uh, uh, last 30 of your life in terms of things that you can do. And, um, you know, this has been really enlightening. And again, there's so much more of this to come, but there's more. Uh, if you go to uh, the limitlesscoach.com, you'll find a lot more information. Uh, you can communicate with Mark and, uh, uh, you know, hopefully that'll be an inspiration for something else to do in your life as you're transitioning from whatever career you have now and trying to find something else uh, to do with your life. So again, Mark, thank you very much. It's been really valuable. We really appreciate your time and uh, your expertise. And of course, uh, we'll be seeing you again soon. Thanks again, thank you, guys. Mark. Thank you again, yeah. guys. It's been fantastic. Can't wait to do it again and again and again. Yeah, yeah, go out and have a limitless day. That's right. I will create a limitless day every moment I get a chance. It right. started already. I already just did. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks again, Mark. Thanks, Thanks guys. Mark. Enjoy your weekend. You too. Bye bye.